Hi, welcome everyone. Um, this is the CSS Grid, Gutenberg, and the Future of Layout session. Um, first off, thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you, thank you to the organizers. A lot of work goes into putting this together. And the thing I love the most about WordPress is its community. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you to the sponsors. All right, a little bit about me. Uh, I'm a designer on the web, depending on the day. Sometimes I'm an imposter, sometimes I'm a web designer. Uh, sometimes I'm a maker of things, a destroyer of things. Uh, most of my work I do, I do a lot of WordPress work. This is a website, this is a WordPress site for a, a fantastic, fantastic um, organization here in Canada, in Wolf, called Arts Everywhere. Um, they, they provide artists with a voice and a, and a room for, for conversation. Check it out if you have a chance. I do also do a lot of contractor work, um, a lot of design, um, a lot of graphics for the local club in New York, some graphics and, and email templates. Email templates. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm a senior UX mentor at the oldest uh, bootcamp online blog. Check it out um, if you want. All right, so I'm going to split this talk into five sessions, right? Why grid? How grid? When? Gutenberg, right? How does he play into this new technology? And demos, depending on how much time we have. All right, so why? Let's start with, let's, let's start with why. Why grid? So what do we have here? Uh, we have a book, children's book. We have a, wait, wrong movie. All right, good. So we have a Christmas movie and um, an artist. They might have a few things in common. The one thing they have in common is that they're all from the 80s, right? Which means they are all older than the web, which I am older than the web, so <sighs> makes me feel this way. <laughs> and that's the context that I want you to treat this talk and, and this workup overall, how young this medium is. Um, you know, all of these mediums have years, right? Hundreds of years, thousands of years on us. This is a really young medium that's, that's moving, it's barely 30 years old, that's moving really fast. And right now, right now is the perfect time to start. Whether it is your first blog, you're a seasoned a developer, whether, whether you, know, you went to the wedding next door and you got bored, right? Right now is the perfect time to start learning about design, the, the time to get excited about the design for the web. So let's, let's take a quick step back as to how layout specifically on the web has evolved, right? So the first website by Sir Tim Berners-Lee, this is 1989, HTML comes around, does the layout with no layout, right? Left to right, you hit the wall, next block. Right, that's how it, that's how it worked. That's the whole inline block thing happening. There was no fanciness, no nothing, right? Um, 1995, HTML comes around, and this is one of the most popular websites of the time, right? Space Jam, and as you can see, designers got really excited about this. We don't care what tables are for. Um, we just saw an opportunity to do a grid, to have some fun, to, to you know, uh, uh, transfer whatever we saw on paper and print uh, to the web. So this was, this was the first time that we saw that we wanted to do something fun with this medium. So that's 95. 95 also is when JavaScript comes around. And JavaScript is worth noting because JavaScript is amazing, right? If you learn it, it's a huge asset to have. Uh, if you don't know it, Learn it as you go. It's harder for some people than others. Uh, but JavaScript is very different from CSS, as in CSS was sort of built by amateurs. It was built as a very, very forgiving declarative language that the browser sees as it's been built for layout, right? Um, it's layout, layout, layout. JavaScript does a lot of things, but JavaScript should not be used as a layout thing. And yeah, wait one second. Whoa. All right, enough with the pop-ups, that's the point. Uh, yeah, so learn JavaScript, use it, but when it comes to layouts, JavaScript is not the solution that we want. And then 96, just a year after, Flash comes around, and this is a website I built about a decade ago for a pretty awesome organization in New York called FC Harlem. Um, yeah, and you can see, I was, it's Tom Cruise right there, right? I'm, I'm moving stuff around, and I'm playing around with, with keynotes and dragging things, and, and keynotes, no, keyframes, and dragging things, and moving things around, and then I just put my movie on the web, and I was done. I had a website. But there were a, f a few flaws with this, right? It's horrible for SEO to put a movie on the web. Uh, you had to pay to build it, and um, 
overall, it did not, it did not move on well, right? So at, this, at the time we found out, we thought that was a solution. We realized it wasn't. Someone came around, some random person, and said, no, it is not, right? And then the whole thing just died. Um, 98, 98 is an exciting year. Things change all over again, right? Uh, CSS comes around, and CSS, this, this super awesome language. Well, let me just, one second, that's me. There it is, all right. So, Zen Garden, right? One of the most, the most popular websites out there. You have one HTML file, and you can build hundreds of websites that look different from the same content. That was, right, mind-blowing at the time. And as you can see, everyone, approached this in a different way, but everyone embraced it. But the screen size looked the same, right? It was a sidebar, and it was the main content, because that's the way our screens looked. And I'll play this again. Well, then this happened, right? Um, things got a little bit out of hand. And this, <laughs> and this, right? So, we started doing this, right? We said, you know what? I don't really care about the screen size. I'm going to build for, X, for device X, for device Y, and then maybe through some JavaScript we'll figure it out, or, or you know, they just let them change their screen. I don't know. Um, but in 2010, this brilliant man called, called Ethan Marcotte comes around and he says, you know, we should be just a little lazy. Why are we doing all of the math and all of the exact pixels? Why can't you just let the browser do the math, right? Why can't you do this thing, responsive design, where I don't care if my browser is 782 pixels or 1433. Let's just do a fluid thing where with some media queries, we realize where do we want to add more columns, where do we want to change our content, and then just let it flow, right? And this was revolutionary again. Everybody got super excited. And we started doing things very differently from that point on. And it's time to go back and say the same thing again, right? The web is 29 years old, and we have to design websites conforming to its limitations. So this is basically the way we felt doing websites, right? The content and, and the browser. Everything floated, and then you try to push things down, and it will come back up, and then you float something to the left, and it will move to the right. And it was, it was a fun thing to try, but it wasn't <laughs> a very fun thing to do. Uh, so what we did is just we started building layout frameworks and layout plugins and layout boilerplates just to mask those limitations. And while well, they work, right? No one has time to start a project from scratch every single time, the time or money or the team. Uh, there was one big flow, right? We started all building the same website, right? Be different and you always stand out. This is one of my favorites of all time. And if you want to retweet it, Maybe with a different, some have a different D, a capital D, so that's, yeah. So that's what grid comes around, right? Grid does not hide these limitations. CSS grid just gets rid of them. Uh, Jen Simmons, an advocate for Mozilla, uh, she says, this new CSS revolutionizes web page layout. And I agree with her. Um, all right, so right now you're saying, okay, JP, we get it, grid is awesome. Um, what I want to know is how. How is this magical thing you speak of works? Right, so uh, I'm, gonna be, I'm gonna run a few demos. Most of them are on the Firefox developer edition browser. Uh, if, you don't, if you're not familiar with browsers, most Chrome, Firefox, Safari, um, they all have a version that they have for developers with some of the newer stuff, so it doesn't break. Sort of like Gutenberg, I guess. Um, yeah, so uh, Firefox, Firefox uh, uh, developer edition is one of the best when it comes to grid, to layout stuff. It's free. If you want to download it and play around with it, um, I definitely recommend it. So um, for these demos, uh, I'm going to be doing, basically, if you're not familiar with code, basically HTML and CSS, right? HTML does the, does the markup, right? The, the content, and CSS does the styling. So all I'm doing is putting six boxes out there with HTML, and then with CSS, I'm going to give them a color so you can tell which one is which. And then that's it. All we need that is to make some magic plus grid, right? So all right, let's get started. So what do we have here? It might, it might be too small, but um, yeah, should be fine, right? I'm thinking if I should zoom in. No, it should be fine. All right, so um, we have a container on the right. What's going on here? So the first thing that happens that's magical about grid, um, all you got to say is display grid, and the browser knows. The browser is like, I got you. I know what you mean. We can get started right now. Then you just. Let the browser know that you want some columns, because this is a grid, and this is the part that's the hardest, the hardest to get at the beginning, but once, once, you, once you wrap your hair around that, it, it, it makes so much sense, right? So 
Remember the glass of water that I showed you before? And don't think about the layout that way. Think of it as a sheet of paper with a grid that you have in front of you, that it has columns and it has rows. That's never happened before. We've never had a two-dimensional layout on the web. Everything has been one dimension. That's why things always float to the top. Um, so now we do columns. We can say how many columns we want. And since we're trying to get away from, this is 20 pixels and then 30 pixels and then this is a percent, and then you have to add it up to 100% and then you change something and the whole thing messes up. They came up with a pretty brilliant thing called fractions. Uh, basically a fraction is the browser will realize for you how much space is available and then it just breaks it down for you. So in this one I just say, make three columns, one is one FR, one is five, one is three. The browser says, oh, I got you, it's nine FR, so one is five nines, three nines, and one ninth, adds it up, and then that's it. Same with rows, you can lay your rows, first time ever. You see the last row is 80 pixels, but there's, I only have six containers. But the, but the grid knows that I, that I set my row, so I have white space for the first time ever. We can do so many cool things with white space. We, we don't have to do like the negative margins on the extra paddings. Uh, we can just have extra rows for anything whenever we want them. So that's another new thing. The last thing that's pretty new, it's a grid gap. So instead of, right, uh, I don't know if any of you has done a gallery, but you have to calculate the gutter, right? And it's like, huh, 33.3%, wait, it's 1%. I gotta do something about this. All right, let's change the padding to 15 pixels. And then you have to calculate, you have to remove, no more of that. The browser does the math for you. The ma you can do grid gap just on the columns, just on the rows. Um, we'll get into that later, but pretty soon you'll be able to animate them uh, with CSS. So those are the three main things that happen with grid. You have a new canvas to work with. So if I play this, uh, this is me playing around with the settings on the side of the, I'm changing the gap. And then I'm going to start reducing the screen size. We're changing the, the, the size of the columns. And if I reduce the screen size, you'll notice that everything is 1 FR, 5 FR, 3 FR. And then when it runs out of content, it just gets, it's go, it goes down to zero. It's responsive from the get-go. So here's another example, right? Uh, we start getting to more real life examples because that, what the other one is, is that's, that happens, right? What happens is the client comes and says, I want a big container for my ads, the blue one. And I also want a big one at the bottom for more ads, because more ads is more money. And that's, that's, that's the math, I guess. So with grid columns, you can do fractions, and then you can do exact numbers like pixels. And then the browser just figures out how much, how much space is left, and I'll figure it out myself. Everything that's left minus 100 pixels. Uh, so the first one is, is 3FR, the second one is 100 pixels, and then the last one, whatever is left. Same with the with the rows, right? I use the pixels and then I use viewport height, you know, the height of my viewport. If you've never used viewport units, they're the best thing ever, right? They'll, they'll basically change the way you think about, about units, viewport width, viewport height, vmax, vmin. Um, if you ever struggle getting your fonts to work and resize properly, give it a go. Um, yeah, so, and, this, and then since we have a grid, right? Let's go back to the sheet of paper. We have some grid, we have lines, and we have cells. So why can't we just play stuff on those cells? For, this, for, the, for number two, for the blue one, I can just span it to rows. It's gonna go from the first one and then down. And then I want it to go three columns, so it's go all the way in. And then if I animate this, the blue one, which is 100 pixels, won't move. It just stay there. So there's a lot of fun stuff that you can do this. You can do here. So you don't have to stick within your cells. But we already set our main grid. So this gives us room to be very, 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 very dynamic in what we can do. All right, so those are spans. Now another example. So you can do, you wanna do like, I mean the 12 column layout is quite popular, right? People do 14, then, then people fight about the 980 or whatever it is that the people are fighting about these days. Um, but you can do a 100 column layout if you really feel like it. But you don't, you don't want to do great template columns, one FR, one FR, one FR, one FR, one FR, one FR. Should I do 100? Wait, one FR, one, no. Uh, but you can repeat, right? You can just say repeat 100, 1 FR, it builds 100 columns for you, and then you can repeat, I'm repeating four times, 10 times the viewport, the viewport width, and it does them for me. And then you see there's again that pretty awesome white space. Uh, it only has six containers, but it knows what I want. This is the first time ever that we can do from the container out. We can build our page, we can actually build it on whatever tool we want, Photoshop, Sketch, Draw It, do some grid around it, and then visualize what is this going to look like? How, I, how can I place this on the grid? And then just transfer it because the layout is there. You, just have, you, you can just put the content in, 
however you want. This, never, this has never worked before, right? Before, before Flex, which Flexbox started that relationship between parent and child, right? Before it was, you drop something and then just pray that it fits. Or, or if you float it, then everything else will go a little bit out of whack. Um, not here anymore. So I'm repeating five columns, L1, FR. They're sort of responsive, right? They start getting small um, and big as I go. So I don't really have to add many media queries. Now, this layout, this layout's a little different from the previous. But this is the same exact code. What's happening here is that, once again, we have an awesome grid set up. So we have the option to be implicit, like the rest of the web, right? You just place content, and it goes from left to right and down. Or you can be explicit. I'm just telling it, hey, you, um, the red, the red uh, container, you're going to go from uh, line, line, uh, line two to four on the columns and line one to three. And then you, uh, blue, are going to go from three to five and two to six. And then you get the idea. You go, you go from four to five. So you start doing stuff like this without any absolute positioning and any negative spacing and any floating. You can just be as, as explicit as you want with your containers. And if you think about right, the possibilities with this is amazing. You can, you can do so many things, so many fun things that you were not able to do before. And then if I. I mean, I, I probably, I'm, yeah, on this video, I'm moving them around. I'm changing the line numbers. Like, hey, why don't you go from line one to the end? Yeah, and it does not affect the other ones at all. All right, so this is perfect. I love this, grid template area. So grid areas come because if you have a grid and you set up your cells, you can actually work with areas. So if you work with a team, this is, this is pretty awesome, right? You just say a header is going to go up there, and then an ad, and a content sidebar, a footer. And then you just tell which container you want it to be, the header, the sidebar, and the footer. And then you can just move them around. Imagine a website where you have um, six or seven things. And as it grows, you just shuffle them around however you want. And it's super accessible, right? Because on your HTML3, you are going header, subheader, paragraph. But with the CSS, you're changing the layout a little bit. So this is, the, this is a native, pretty awesome way of working. All right. so. There's so much, much more you can, ah, uh, I'm doing this meme again, sorry. So, all right, so you can do horizontal and vertical alignments, right? If you think of a Word document, you can justify things, and with Flexbox, you can do a lot of this. Uh, Flexbox and Grid are the first two that you can do with one line of code, align an item at the center uh, of, of a container without anything else, right? You align self, boom, you go in the center. So, um, oh, I forgot her name, I'll tweet her later. Uh, but she gave me a pretty awesome, I mean, I, I saw a talk from her, which had a pretty awesome way of seeing how you can treat justifying on Flexbox and Grid. Basically, everything that's justify is like a Word document. You justify things like, you know, space between them or space around them. And then with vertical align, you can do everything that's vertical. Uh, um, and then you can do writing mode. So if you think of, of the way the web works, we're not the only language, right? And we're not the only people that are using it. So Grid allows you to, if you do Hebrew, if you do, um, I guess, what's the other one that I was thinking of? Um, Mongolian, that goes left to right and bottom. Anyway, you can do a different writing mode. It's a, it's a pretty awesome way of doing it. And uh, I'm just sharing one last one. It's my favorite piece of, uh, of code that I've been using forever and ever. Once you get used to the whole repeat, there's a few things that you can do with, with CSS Grid. This one I'm using. Um, the repeat, and I'm saying containers you're going to be you're going to fit to the max of your size, and then the min max is also a new width grid, which basically I'm telling my containers you're going to be a minimum of 120 pixels, but not as not bigger than the rest of them. So without media queries, I'm able to do this zero media queries. I just did a full gallery where things respond, and as long as they know they're going to be too small, they just break down. So this saves you so much time and so much code. I'll have a few examples on my demos of how I've, I've been using it. All right, so those are pretty basic. Uh, now, when can you use Grid? If you haven't heard of it, so Grid, grid is, it's, it's been on the works for a while. Um, but March 2017 was, was when it was about to be released. And as you can see, uh, this is an awesome site. If you've never seen it, can I use .com? Every single CSS feature that you want to use, uh, go there and see how, what, how the support is. So basically, support was 0.30%. Pretty bad, don't use it. But three weeks later, for the first time ever since, since I don't know, any CSS feature, the browsers got work together and 
they all came around, all of the major ones, Chrome, Firefox, Safari, they released, and they were at 26%. But obviously, this being the web, and us being a com community that likes to complain, uh, Jen Simmons said, three weeks ago, Firefox, two weeks ago, Chrome, last week, Opera, today, Safari, yes, CSS Grid is here. And then the comments, if you can see them, is, hooray, any word on Edge? Come on, Edge. What about Edge? How about Edge? OK, Edge. Uh, Edge Android, no, unfortunately, I can't use it. But anyway, so yeah, there's always someone that won't be able to use it. And uh, on October 17, uh, um, Microsoft announced that they were working on it. Actually, October 17 was they, when they uh, um, announced that it was coming, that it was on the next version. So that's it. It was here, 69.53% on October. I've, I've been taking the screenshots as I do these talks, and February was 82, 84. So use it now. Use it now. If you, like today is 85, if you, uh, if you have some analytics, if you want to run some tests, if you feel like some of your users might have older browsers, um, supports is your best way to go, right? Uh, the browsers, if you do supports, uh, uh, you just tell the browser, hey, if, if you support grid, use this code, otherwise ignore it and go back and give them a nice layout that's accessible, right? Accessibility should be key. All right, uh, to learn more, Jen Simmons, as I mentioned a couple of times, she's the, the responsible for 99% of the stuff I know about this. She has a video series called Layout.Land. She has some labs that are the photos right there on which she does some pretty awesome crazy demos. She has a podcast. Uh, and uh, she's, she's a developer advocate at Mozilla. And they have a pretty awesome playground where you can learn all of this in a much, much nicer way. Um, yeah, and Rachel Andrew. So Rachel Andrew. She helped write the spec. She wrote DevWook on CSS. You want to learn CSS? Get her, uh, learn everything about her. She runs, uh, she's uh, the lead writer on Smashing Magazine. Pretty awesome, amazing articles. Uh, she does a newsletter called CSS Layout News if you want to subscribe. Uh, the CSS Workshop is the one I, I, I mean about um, going in and, and learning about CSS. It's pretty amazing. Right, so Gutenberg. How does this tie, tie, tie in with Gutenberg? It's a great question. So here's my journey to Gutenberg. I started like most of you, right? I, I was doing Flash websites, and uh, somebody wanted a work, WordPress site. And I checked it out, and I didn't know what to do, so I just bought a team. And the client got really happy. And then they said, whoa, this is awesome. You built this. And I was like, so I, my next move for my next site, I was like, well, let me use a default WordPress theme, right? It looks like it's less cluttered, and, and a lot, I'm getting some confidence, and lets me, it lets me know, it lets me know what I'm doing wrong a little better, and I can do some better things. And yeah, I should have read what a child I'm is. I, should have, <laughs> I know, rookie mistake. So then I said, you know, this is not a solution. I can't be doing all this like this. Uh, I gained some more confidence, and then I just started building custom themes. I use underscores at me a lot. If you work that, I know it's a huge community behind it. It's pretty awesome. Um, they have a, a, a started boilerplate and a, and a WooCommerce boilerplate started that I've used there. It's pretty awesome. Um, yeah, so then I got more confidence. Then, um, you know, the, the tiny MC, tiny MC, what is it? MC, yes. Tiny MC is like tiny MC. Uh, yeah, I uh, wasn't doing it for me too, right? So I, I found out about advanced custom fields and it blew my mind. I was like, oh, yes, yes, as a designer, this is what I want. So. Yeah, I've been using it ever since. Um, I learned about Gutenberg, and I started using it. I installed it. I started. It. I installed it. And I went back to advanced custom fields right away. Right, right? So I was like, Yeah, no, this is not ready. So it's cool. It's coming. And then uh, a few releases later, uh, uh, there's been a lot of noise lately. So I installed it again and I checked it out. And no, no, let me let me go back to advanced custom fields. Right. So for this talk, I, I've been using it a little more, and I've been learning about it. And uh, you know, the the consensus is. I'm going to have to use it. Uh, um, like everyone, I get used to it. It's not that I hate it. It's that it, it's, 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 it's a little rough to change mindsets, I guess. And, and I really love the way advanced custom fields uh, uh, treats them. Um, but I also wanted to do a little bit of uh, uh, what's the difference, because I, don't, I definitely don't want you to get confused, right? Uh, CSS Grid is browser technology, right? You all have it. You all have it on your phones right now. So. Anyone, anybody wants to try it, anybody that's, you don't know what CodePen is, just open an account and then start playing around with it. Uh, um, there's a grid, and then it's, it's the CSS group uh, uh, works on it, so the updates are, are, are quite fast. 
And the grid layout level two is coming soon, which is exciting. This, 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 this relationship between parent and child that I mentioned is gonna get stronger. There's a subgrid happening where you'll be able to target things inside deeper. So I guess you can go parent, child, and then uh, grandchild. Uh, and then it's, it's two dimensional, right? Uh, which allows you to be implicit and explicit. Nowhere else. Nowhere else can you do this before. Uh, Gutenberg is a WordPress editor. You need WordPress to run it, right? Um, it was released soon. I'm not sure. Did it release? No. It was yesterday, no? Uh, what? It was, what? Sorry? Oh, okay. 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 Awesome. All right. So it is coming soon. Soon is right. And then it's blocks. So this is what excites me about it, right? It's blocks. And if everything that you saw about grid, it's sales. So it's sort of the same concept, right? We get to stop thinking about the web as this, as this just text medium or this medium where things flow to the top, which is more free medium. So this is what I'm really looking forward. And I write... I wrote, should you CSS grid at some point? Because unfortunately, they did not bake it in. So in a way, right, Gutenberg is already behind uh, uh, with what the, what the modern browsers can do, right? Uh, I just took a couple of screenshots of working through it. You know, they do a lot of left negative pixels and position absolutes and, and top minus, minus negative. So all of these things will be solved with grid. You don't need to do any of that anymore. Um, it still does, for example, calc is awesome, right? Calculate, it helps the browser. You give all of the calculations to the browser um, and they're using flex, which is pretty awesome, right? They're, they're just letting the browser do most of the work, but it's still some work there. You see some, instead of gutters, they're using exact pixels. Um, at some point I saw they're using position sticky, which is one of the greatest things that's coming to the web, right? Just your browsers, I mean, your container sticks to the top when you scroll. It's a working draft, so we won't see it for a while, but it's awesome that they're, I see that they're trying to implement some of the new things. So my, my main takeaway is Gutenberg will get much better. And the way the, 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 the web is going, right, the way this technology is happening, uh, I'm pretty sure Gutenberg will sort of catch up and get much easier to do, and you'll do some, some pretty awesome things with it. From what I saw, not yet. No, they they're they're using a lot of flex box, but I did not, so, I did not see any grid. I no, no. So I'm looking at the HTML that they're rendering. It's often the CSS depends on the theme. Mm -hmm. But uh, is the is the CSS and uh, the HTML that they are well, depending on the block level. Yeah, because HTML hasn't changed at all. So CSS is the, is the yeah. All right, so let's go through some demos. I have just so you have a, a better idea as to. Um, I th what I'm thinking is. Huh, that's a great question. Well, the thing is that grid treats blocks differently. Grid, grid gives blocks a much, much better things to do with them because it gives them better way to work not only widths and heights. So I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure if you're working with blocks, you do want, right? You don't want to... Yeah. Well, in that sense, yeah, I mean, the, so if, if the page builder is taking care of, of spitting out the code, it'll spit out the much, 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 much smaller code, right? So if someone builds a page builder that spits out a gallery on grid, the code will be significantly less lines. And uh, because you don't need, for example, as many meta queries, you don't need as many things. So, yeah, basically... 
Well, the, the, the parent can be a grid, and then the, all of the children in it can go anywhere. So you don't have to be children and parent big. So just the parent can be a grid container, and that's it. Yeah. Well, I'll show, I'll show you some demos, and, and it might make more sense. It's real stuff that I'm working with. So uh, let me see how do we do this. Let me see if I can. So I have all of this in Chrome. I've been working on some. So one of the things that's changed is I started using it on more projects, right? Uh, can you see this? Good. So this is for. Uh, the FC Harlem I mentioned, um, don't mind this, it's too small. So basically, this is the Firefox developer that comes up when you, you just right click on the developer tools, right? You see your DOM, you see your HTML, and then your CSS. Uh, and as you can see, it's a very, very straightforward layout. If I click on it, one of the coolest things about Grid, it shows me what I did. So uh, basically, I did here one column with a bunch of rows. And then I just changed it because I wanted to have some overlap. So as you can see, uh, this way, you can really tell what is going on. It looks like negative margins. But all I did is I said, hey, why are, why are you three columns? And then the second column, they both overlap. And then that's what's happening. So it's, you can do some fun stuff with very, very little code. And then it just gets smaller. And then it might feel comfortable. So this one I did, this, is, this got a little more crazy, um, where I was trying to figure out how to do a map transit layout. Uh, and and play around, and, and in the past, this would have been a lot of floats or a lot of things to the left, to the right, and to the left. Uh, with grid, it's actually kind of fun. Um, as you can see, the the I just did some grids and some rows, and I started dropping stuff in there. And the greatest thing about this is that it changes. Like, boom, lessons goes to the left, but lessons on the HTML is the first thing that comes up is the header. So when uh, when accessibility, that's the, still the header. It's not like I'm writing it somewhere else and I'm floating it. So. I, I just had some fun, and, and, and yeah, if you, if you were to look at this with a grid, it makes much sense, right? Like, this looks a little harder to look at, uh, to understand how it was built, but when you look at it this way, like, oh, okay, I see what you did. You cheated a little bit. You put some borders and some round radius, and uh, so let's not look at the cheating part. Just, uh, yeah, so, yeah, so I'm working with, and then the menu is the same thing. I kind of wanted it to go around, let me see. And, and I have some, 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 the menus go, like for example, go, um, you can see, the menus go here on the third column, on the third row. And then when it gets small, I was like, oh, it's gonna get too smaller, so why don't I just change around some stuff? And then boom, I just move them to another column or another row and then put them on a list. And it takes one media query to do all of this. And the cool thing is that semantically, again, the menu, the logo is still first, the menu is second. Nothing really changed. So. Let me start closing this. Um, this, is, this is my forever changing website, right? We don't really change our websites unless we're looking for a job. So if you look at it, there might be some things that don't work. I'm, I'm experimenting with, with uh, variable fonts. If you don't know about variable fonts, if you want to put together a talk on variable fonts, they're amazing. Uh, they're changing the web. It's one font to rule them all, right? Fonts are vectors, so all you have to do is change a few things on it. Some of them work, some of them don't. This one is, uh, this one's right. But anyway, this is sort of a little grid, right? It's also a grid. I did same idea, it's one column. Where are you? Uh, there it is. There you go, if you can see it, it's one column for everything. And then as we go, I just place things on my, I did a grid, and then I put in whatever I want. You're gonna go from two to three, four to five, and then I can keep playing around as, 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 with as many heights as I want, uh, as many uh, window sizes viewport sizes as I want. I can just keep modifying it. Um, and it doesn't really matter how I modify the layout, right? Because HTML knows what's a header, knows what's content, knows what's an excerpt. So there's one, one other one. This one from the website that I mentioned that I work here in Canada. Uh, they have this, these round tables and I'm never really sure how many round tables they'll have. So these ones are getting a little big, but this time they have seven and sometimes they have four. So what I did is, is that, that, that example that I show without media queries where it just, if I make it smaller, it actually works too. Look, if, if it was really big, it'll look like this. And then as he hits that target size, it just goes to the next column, zero media queries. And he does all of the work for me. I'm using it, I'm using it here too. The same exact, one line of code. It's a little gallery that I did of all the work that I did this year. And then when it gets too big, it goes to two. And I keep zooming out, it goes to three, to four, to five. Yeah, it's, if he gets it in smaller, he knows it respects the size that I said, hey, don't you dare go smaller than that size. Don't you dare go bigger than that size. Like, okay, I got you, JP. You know, I'm, my, I'm a computer. Until I take over the world, I'm here to follow your instructions. 
So yeah, look, it's, it's, it's one line of code. So greed adds a lot of possibilities. Um, yeah, I love this book. Uh, uh, I just tried a lot of the stuff that we do, right? This is dumb stuff, and, and, and that's where you have the most fun. And I just try to replicate it. As you can see with grid, it's the same exact thing, right? It's, I was playing around with see how things can go on top of each other without not doing any, any of that absolute, absolute positioning. And then once you start looking at how it's built, it's the same exact idea. Things on top of things, uh, um, because you can have things that are implicit and explicit, and this one shows it the best. So I wanted to do a layer on top of a layer, a container on top of a container, and then the bottom is, is fixed, and then the top you can scroll. So, because I love a book that goes like this, right? It's an, it's an optical illusion. So, I didn't want to do any position fixed, or any absolute, or any floats, anything. So, there's just two containers. They're both the parent container. This might solve the pages question, right? They all go off just one column, but they both go from the first to the last, and the top to the bottom. One, one overflows and scrolls, and then, you know, designers, you call it mistakes, we call it features, right? So this one I made a mistake and it's lights on the highway, right? Um, it looks good and then I made another mistake and this one is snake, is snake, I don't know. Uh, yeah, so I'm playing, and this is all grid and I'm playing around with, and they're sort of responsive-ish, this one's because these are experiments, right? They get smaller and they're actually kind of fun to do and see. Um, yeah, and then another, I'm, I'm doing this one, I actually didn't finish it, but it's, 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 it should be done in two weeks. It's basically grab a control panel and then see, hey, how can I do this? Because I want to learn how to do areas a little better. And it's almost there. So it's just great. As you can see, it's getting started. And for example, this one has been centered by using um, the span. Uh, it's flex. And then I'm saying align item center. I don't need to float them or margin auto or whatever. And oh, it actually works by itself. So but justify the content. So there's very little code that's happening here. Um, let me see. And this is also. Another one where it looks like things are very different, right? It looks like I did. Um, well, why if I started doing this silly thing uh, um, where I just jump? And, and I wanted to put them together as a little gallery. And if you see the parent container, it's just a wrapper with here it has three, here it has two, here it has one. And then the ch all of the children containers have a grid of 10 by 10. Like, there you go. And I just positioned the photo. So if I wanted to change this photo right here, I said, you know what, you're gonna go, instead of going from two and span seven rows, you're gonna go and span eight rows. You know what, nine, oh, about six. And then you wanna start at the third row. All right, good. And then my header, it's gonna start, instead of starting at the ninth row, it's gonna start at the eighth, Sad. right? So yeah, it's like working with paper. It's like moving things on a container and it respects them. And, and it knows, especially the fact that it can do vertical works so much better. Um, and I think that's all I have on the demos. Um, I'm building a couple more, but they're horrible at the moment. So I'll, I'll tweet them if you uh, want to see them when they're ready. Yeah, and, and I just want to finish. I like finishing with this, especially this is a WordCamp conference where everyone is trying to figure it out. Everyone in this medium is trying to figure it out. So uh, I love this quote by Chris Coyier that says, you know, just a little reminder that it's about 100 times more important what you build than how you build it. So go out, make stuff. Break stuff, not client stuff, right? Break your own stuff. Uh, and, and then if you want to share it, let me know. I'll, I'll love to see it. I'll love to see what you come up with next. Uh, this is a really, really young medium, and, and it's moving really fast. And it's usually the loudest voices in the room that tend, the one with the mic, is the loudest voices in the room that tend to want to dictate the conversation, but we're all trying to figure it out, going back to that. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Uh, the slides are here online. I'll tweet them again if you want to see some of the examples. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for, for having me. <laughs> Any questions? Yes. Uh, Z index is on overflow, on, on when, when content on top of each other. So without, without doing an explicit Z index, what item goes to the top, what item goes to the bottom? Great question. So uh, basically what you're asking is, uh, um, if you do implicit, uh, um, 
it falls down naturally. If you do explicit, things start to overlap. What 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 is what gets decided? I think uh, it follows the same the same exact uh, so the what HTML. Whatever comes next goes on top. Yeah. So the first item is the background. Yeah. Basically, so it's the same. Yeah. So it's it's. I assume that index works as well. Yes. Correct. Yeah. So it's it's cascading the same way the HTML does. So whatever comes after will go on top. Um, I've done a lot of work with pseudos before and after, and I've had to play around with them. So uh, those, I'm not 100% sure. Here, so, so, uh, that's a great question. That might be possible with subgrid that's coming. I don't think it's possible right now. Like, for example, if, if the one on top has a background and the one below doesn't, I don't think changing the index on the child below will top the... Yeah. I'm, yeah, that's a great question. I'll have to test it, but I don't think it works yet. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I think this index relates to the parent. Ah, oh, someone might... So it might work. It might work. I'll, 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 I'll test that. I, I, that's actually, actually that's a great question. I'm not sure if this index is to the viewport or to the parent. Um, to the parent? Okay, so it might not work then. It's the parent, yeah. Did you do your examples in code uh, I've, I've put some of them, yeah. I, I don't think I have them all, but I dropped them in there. Yeah. And I'll share, I'll share them with the slides. Um, are there any... Uh design packages that use CSS Suite as an output, like graphic design packages? Graphic design packages. Uh, not yet. So uh, for the mentorship I do, we use uh, Figma a lot. And it's free. So if you want to play with, uh, 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 start testing how, how you can move away from, because Photoshop is, is a pixels based, right? So it's a little tough to work in today's web. Uh, so Figma and Sketch, Figma and Sketch are, are, Sketch is the leading in the industry, but Figma, it's, it's coming up pretty fast. It's pretty awesome. And, and they do responsive really well. Uh, F-I-G-M-A, Figma, yeah. Um, yeah, they do responsive really, really well. They don't do great yet because it's mostly like, uh, they, they spit out some, they spit out good CSS and HTML. They're not there yet, but uh, they, they're built to be responsive so that you can definitely have a better idea. As of now, I'm not sure. The, the, what I get my info, the latest, is from, from Rachel Andrew on Smashing Magazine. Amazing articles. Uh, and so a couple of the newsletters, and I see that people are starting to put some themes. And some, uh, a friend of mine wanted to do a WordPress theme with Fred uh, as a hobby, so you know how long those take. But, uh, and he wanted to do another one React, and he wanted to do another. He wants to do all the things. Uh, yeah, but I'm not sure. So I'll, I'll, I'll have a look. That's a great question. I, I haven't seen any. Uh, it's a great opportunity, I guess. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so what I use for my editor, you mean this? Uh, let me just go to the demos. No. So. Uh, that's a great, no, Figma is mostly a design tool. So uh, um, if you want to do code, Figma is not the way to go. So every browser, every browser comes with tools to help you see the back end, right? The, how it was built. And so all you have to do is right click and then inspect and it brings everything that's on that page. And then here you can definitely manipulate it and you see there's the HTML and you can actually say, um, like I could go right now to Let's see, uh, let me go to, let me do it in Chrome, for example, just quickly. Uh, let's see if this works. I don't really want to work on Toronto. There it is. So I can go open work on Toronto, and then I can say inspect, and it shows me everything that's on the page, HTML and CSS, and I can mess with it here on my computer. So I can say December 1st, I can say December 10th, we're gonna do this all over again, right? And it changes the date and I get to see it. And, and, and we do a lot of work here, it's a lot of fun, especially designers, because you get to see live changes. Uh, uh, and, and, but as soon as you refresh it, it's gone, right? Especially same with the CSS. If you really want to learn how to code and, and mess around with things, definitely, definitely open a free account at CodePen. CodePen.io uh, um, is the same open source mindset as WordPress, right? It's the same sort of thing where if I see this thing right now, the first one that came out, like the goddess is coming, this is awesome. And like, oh, I wanna learn how to, they did this. So if you don't know the code, all you do is you fork it, it's yours, and then you reverse engineer it and see what broke and what didn't and you didn't hurt anyone, right? So this is mine now and I get to be like, huh, I wonder how they, let's see, 
Let's, uh, let's remove one of the blocks. Let's remove one of this one. What's going on? What's going to happen? You save it, and instead of five, it's now four, right? And that's how we, most of us start. <laughs> Did it break? No? Good, good, good. All right. Are the client, is the client calling me? Yeah, so I definitely recommend CodePen. What I did for my samples, it was the browser that I was doing things live. Yeah, um, I used to code. If you want to code on your computer, I use Atom. There's about a million of them, text editors. Uh, um, um, Atom and then Microsoft does, does uh, Sublime and Visual Studio Code is the, the cool things, the cool kids, the one the cool kids are doing now. Uh, yeah. Yes. Just want to mention that Figma has offered an organizational membership to anybody on the WordPress Slack team. Whoa, that's awesome. So you can use your WordPress Slack team credentials to log into Figma. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, they, they are pretty amazing. Because they're, so they're, the thing that they're doing uh, really well is creating little components that you can reuse. So you, if you build a button, all you have to do is you say, this is what a button will look like, disable, enable, active, inactive, whatever. And then when you're doing your demos and your prototypes, you don't have to build every single demo every single time like in Photoshop. You just give it the component an instance and, and yeah. And then, you know, you sometimes you download little toolkits for like iOS if you're working on a project. Uh, and, and it comes with a few things that you can get started with. And, and yeah, but it's mostly, it's mostly spits out uh, uh, high five versions of a website. Does not speed a website at all. There's no code, all right? We have a time, right? So, all right, let me see. Figma for WordPress. This is great. Oh, and it's recent, the 19th. Of course, I knew this. <laughs> huh, awesome. Yeah, so. Good. Figma offers a bunch of. Uh, I mentioned Figma a lot. Sketch is the, the leading, in it, but Fig, Sketch is Mac only, so it gets a little bit annoying. Uh, Figma works on a browser, it works on your computer. So if you want to, you know, learn a little bit more about what design and how it works, use it. Download it. Start doing some shapes and colors and see how things work. Um, should be fun. All right. This is good to know. This is great to know. Thank you so much. I knew I was going to learn a lot of things today. All right. Anyone else? Yes. Sorry. I'm CSS Springworks. Uh, I'm assuming they'll they'll come up soon. I've seen a few here and there on on GitHub. Like people start releasing their own that, that they do. I think big ones. I don't think frameworks will go away, right? Like I mentioned, budget time, theme wise, you can't really just start from scratch every single time. So I'm pretty sure they won't go away, and I'm pretty sure they'll move to more uh, great stuff. So they'll be definitely definitely lighter, which is one of the biggest complaints about foundations and Bootstrap. I think they'll they'll get much better, especially the whole vertical thing that they have going on, uh, that you need 5% of it. And it's like, what do I do with the other stuff? Uh, yeah, I, uh, there are a few. I mean, the, send me a message, and I'll, I'll, I think I have a couple uh, bookmarked of, of repos that people have put together, and then I'll send them to you. Yeah, you had a question, sorry. What's your take on Photoshop versus Sketch and the future of design tools? Would you recommend moving to Sketch with Photoshop? Uh, honestly, the best tool that you have is the one, right? Like, I. I I think, I mean, I, I've been doing the student thing for a while, and, and their devices are very different, and some put together really great stuff. Uh, uh, so I think it's more, so Photoshop, if it's the only thing you have, use it. Use it, love it, uh, you can make some awesome stuff with it. But Photoshop is very pixel-based, right? And we're sort of moving away from that more and more, with more vector support on browsers. Uh, right? If you zoom in on a photo, you will see the dots. Right? And if you're using a vector base, when everything is more vectors, things are, are a lot more elastic. So if you have a chance, you, it's just a matter of time, I guess. Uh, it'll, it'll probably save you a ton of time if you start using a, a tool that was designed to build websites. Uh, yeah, I mean, I use Photoshop for some of the soccer club because I have to manipulate photos. And there's no other tool like it. Uh, I, don't, I can't do it in Sketch. Uh, and and for, I can do some things on Figma that I can do in Illustrator. So the tool keeps on changing. I don't think there's one tool that can catch them all. But definitely, if time, time is, turns out to be the best asset we all have, right? So I, as a time saver, I recommend giving it a go. And, and, and you'll see you start working faster and faster than you do in Photoshop. Yeah. 
hope that makes sense. Yeah. Is that all? Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. And, uh,